we are joined by KC Welch today. He is the Vice President of Career at Pearson Virtual Schools, driving a new industry-driven college and career readiness program. And the program was launched in the spring of 2023 and offers an innovative new tri-credit approach where courses can deliver high school credit, industry-recognized micro-credentials and eligibility for college credit towards over 150 United States U.S. bachelor's degree programs. And before his role at Pearson, Casey co-founded and served as the CEO of Talo, a leading early talent development company. And during his tenure, he transformed Talo into one of the country's premier early talent communities, connecting millions of students and transitioning adults with Fortune 500 employers colleges and credentialing providers so before we get into our conversation on the topic at hand bridging the high school higher education gap for college or career readiness here is an exciting twist let us stick in the things of our guest so Casey, get ready for a rapid fire round of random words i'm going to mention a few and i would love to hear the first thing that comes to your mind in response without thinking much if you're ready let's get started that might be scary, but let's do it. <laughs> no, I, I won't put my guess on this spot. It is just to know the other side of you, Casey. And here comes my first word, curiosity. You're engaged. Invention. Innovation and progress. Future. Hope and optimism. Book. Pivot to the future. Movie. Office space. <laughs> Education. <laughs> Promise of a better future. Universe. Vast opportunity. And leadership. Integrity. Role model. Mentorship. And the last one is success. Fulfilled. And your your answers are spot on, right? I, I loved all the responses and thank you for participating in the first rapid fire round so sportively. And when I say first, there is one more rapid fire round towards the end of the episode. <laughs> So stay tuned. <laughs> All right. So, folks, welcome to the Guiding Voice podcast series where we embark on transformative conversations for a better future. I'm your host, Navin Samala, dedicated to making the world a better place through valuable discussions that add value not only to your life, but also to your career. And thank you so much for tuning in. And Casey, hearty welcome to the Guiding Voice. Super excited to host you today. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for having me on the show today. Yeah, pleasure to have you and let's get started with your career. So before getting into this role of vice president of career at Pearson Schools, I think you co-founded a company named Talo. And likewise, I would like to understand a few milestones in your career so that our audience get to know different and diversified career paths that leaders choose before getting there. Yeah. So um, it, it, I think like everybody, it is a fun journey. Um, I probably didn't take the traditional path to starting up a company. I uh, was from a rural town um, uh, in Pennsylvania and, you know, got an opportunity to play sports at the next level, which then actually ironically got me into this into this career field. And so um, when I when I we had the opportunity to start Tallow um, a little over a decade ago, it was really built and grew out of this idea of, you know, if you look at the way we look at, at athletes in the country and in the world, um, right, everybody knew where, you know, the, the star football player, the basketball player, but, you know, what about the welder, the technician, the engineer, et cetera? Um, there was always ways to be showcased. I was one of those. I happened to be a, a kicker. Some call it football, some don't, uh, depending on where it is, but I got seen. And uh, so I think one of the, you know, big milestones in the career was actually this this idea of, of starting to connect the talent plat talent workforce earlier than it had ever been done. Mm -hmm. um, traditionally, it was always looked at at higher ed or yeah. into the workforce. And we yeah. said, you know, the entire future workforce comes through high school. Yeah. Um, what if we could connect that earlier and bridge that? And um, so uh, we said, well, let's take a model similar that was done in the world of sports. Let's mm -hmm. create a platform to help showcase the skills, abilities, and talents um, of these young learners. And uh, so we 
scratched it down on a on a napkin and took this from idea uh, to startup mm-hmm. to um, as you mentioned building one of the you know largest and most diverse early talent platforms in the country and connecting these students to some of the the biggest employers in the world, the Apples, the John Deere's, um, et cetera, and and leading to uh, eventually being acquired by a publicly traded company. So I think that was one of the big milestones. I think having the opportunity to sell across multiple verticals when doing that. So when you think about K-12, higher ed, and the workforce, enterprise companies, they're all very different. They behave different. They buy different. And we found a way, uh, a unique way uh, to be able to connect and engage them. And I think, you know, one of the last things that I think is a milestone of the career is all that experience and leading it to it. Mm-hmm. It was really cool to connect talent on a local, a, na- uh, a statewide and a national scale. Um, mm-hmm. That was really important to me. But uh, getting a chance to join the world's leading learning company in Pearson to be able to connect those same dots, but do it on a potentially global scale where we could impact more with mm-hmm. more resources, with more technology, really bridging that gap from learning to work is, uh, I think it's a milestone because it's its something that I've always dreamed of. And uh, we'll see if I can help deliver on that promise. Oh, wow. This reminded me of uh, one of the projects which uh, me and a couple of friends have worked uh, last year. And again, we wanted to tap on the early talent um, uh, within India. And uh, we went to high schools and started uh, taking up some surveys um, to understand the career inclinations of students. And we came up with a program. Of, of course, we did not go live yet, but um, I can relate to what you guys are trying to address. And I think um, that is the right thing to do at this moment. Uh, and uh, before everybody else does, I think uh, it is. Uh, something we wanted to nurture the young talent right at the right uh, stage right I, I can relate to it love it all right so now let's move forward and my another standard question okay which i ask most of the guests which is about the success mantra so please talk to us about the top three things that have contributed to your success so far oh geez um that's a great question all right and it- I think there's so many, but if I had to circle it, you said top three, right? So I think the one biggest thing to lead to the success, it wasn't um, what I did, it was who I did it with. And so I think surrounding myself with people that were way smarter than me, that knew a lot better, I was really blessed to work with some great people and great teams. Um, I think that was huge. I think there is a huge difference between being on a team and being a team. Um, and when you can be a team, I think incredible things can happen. Uh, second, I would say listening, listening to customers, listening to employees, listening to market signals and everything that's going on. And I, I think it's it's really important and it can be a big challenge is not to listen how people are saying things to you, but what they are saying. I think, you know, being in the end of those other customers or clients or investors or whichever part that might be. Sometimes people are, uh, they're passionate about sharing their thoughts and you need to look through that passion to really get to what they actually say. Because more often than not, I find it to be that, that critical reflection point that we need to make a better product. And, and then I think it's, it's humility and empathy. I think being humble helps you connect with people on, on other levels. Um, I'm a big believer in servant leadership. So, you know, nothing's above me, nothing's below me. I work for my team members. They don't work for me. Uh, so when you when you bring in that level and you don't take everything so serious, you can laugh and make fun of yourself. Um, I think that helps with that that culture and that team. And I hope it's okay. I I think there's a fourth. Yeah. And that's really to be authentic. You are who you are. Mm-hmm. I think that's what makes us all so special. So don't don't hide behind it. Um, figure out a way to embrace it and utilize it. Be proud of it. Mm-hmm. So one, one thing which will stay with me for long is being on a team versus being a team. I think this has to start as early as possible. Okay, the moment we join a new team or the moment somebody else joins us team, they have to feel like they're part of it rather than on it. Makes sense. Yeah, one absolutely. Now let's talk about uh, Pearson Connections Academy. So what challenges are you guys uh, planning to address at the global scale? What aren't we trying to ch- challenge? I mean, there's there's so many, um, and I think that's that's the the blessing and the curse of you know being one of the the world's uh, leading learning companies. Um, but but I think where we're really focused in here is 
is um, I think it's kind of simple. The our, We know our education system needs to better prepare our learners for the futures that they want. And so how can we do that? I think often when people think about pursuing education, it often arounds again that, that promise of a better life. For most of us, careers are the vehicles that lead to that better life. So that's why our goal is how do we place our learners in the best possible situation and prepare them for those future careers? And they, they go a lot of different paths. I think that's the other thing. Some of them, if we think about high school coming in, they go to two-year college. That's great. Some of them go through four-year. It's great. Some of them go to the military. It's great. And some go right into the workforce. And that's also great. It's how do we align that? Because we believe if we can really focus on three things that we found in our learnings, which is how do we help impact the direction of people? How do we help them with the competence aspect of it? It's huge. How do we make sure that they feel right? So they get the learnings, they understand the direction, they feel confident they can go at it. And then last but certainly not least is you can have all the learnings in the world, but sometimes that connection piece is that barrier that stands in the way. So how do we help them with direction? How do we help them with confidence? And how do we help them with connection and that network they need to get to where they need to achieve to live the life they want to live? I think, uh, yeah, that, that is one of the bigger purpose which uh, you guys are trying to be part of and uh, solve for the world. And let's uh, talk about the durable skills. This is something which uh, grabbed my attention the moment I was going through your profile. And uh, I, I was really fascinated about uh, what these durable skills skills are and why should we focus on them because I'll be very honest here so far I have been coming across transferable non-transferable skills mm -hmm. but durable skill is something which I came across for the first time so please explain that <laughs> yeah well I think you hit it. it it's funny that I feel like I don't know I haven't been around that long but probably every 10 years we come up with another term for the exact same thing um, right it's been called soft skills right? We've heard that for a long time. Yeah. Essential skills, mm -hmm. 21st century skills, transferable <laughs> skills, right? Now it's durable skills, right? But, but I think yeah. what you hit on it though, is mm -hmm. we, you know, we are going to a skills-based, skill-based hiring economy. It's mm -hmm. happening quickly and there, it shows no signs of slowing down. But for those people that go, you know, just, we've heard all these terms, but what really is it, right? Yeah. Think about those think about those skills like communication, leadership, critical thinking, collaboration, teamwork. Those are just a few of them. And and you hit it a moment ago when you said they're transferable. Yeah. So when you think about any industry, when you think about any occupation, those are the things that don't change and haven't changed over time. Those are the core. And so when and so when we think about those, you know, how important they're becoming and how quickly our economy is changing how fast technology is changing, right? Hard skills change, durable skills don't. Um, they're predominantly very there, uh, very important. There was a great study that was put out uh, by a group, uh, American Succeeds, and they, they really jumped into this in a big way a few years ago, and they did a report. And it really showed how employers were signaling how important durable skills are. And they studied 80 million job postings. And they shared out of that, seven out of the 10 most requested skills were not hard skills, they were durable skills. Mm. And with that, durable skills were requested nearly five times more than the top five hard skills. So what does that mean? I think what it, right, what it means in working with these employers is they want to hire for durable skills, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And train for the hard skills um, because that will change. But if you're a good person, if you're good at collaborating, if you're good at critical thinking, Mm -hmm. You can evolve and grow and be moved around throughout the company, yeah. right? Um, and so that's uh, that's something that I think is really important to us here at Pearson is how do we how do we verify these skills? How do we make sure our learners have these skills and they're ready for them? And they're not just the industry certs and credentials, but they are durable skills to make them most prepared to be confident in going into their future. Got it. That is clear. And uh, let's now talk about the tri-credit system as well. Yeah. So track credit system, I think this is this is a um, you know part that when I joined Pearson, they were just getting ready to launch this here was a really exciting aspect of it. So we talked earlier about how there's multiple pathways and we realized that like 
you know, it's okay not to know right off the bat if I want to go to a two-year college first yeah. or a four-year, or I want to go into it. I think we put a lot of angst on that, um, and we see it a lot in our learners. They're not sure. Do I got to do one or do the other? And we're a big believer, and it's not an either or, right? It's mm -hmm. an and. Right. And so how do we put our, our learners in the best place to have the most options when they have to make that decision point? And that led to this tr tri-credit approach that we had. So we created this really unique uh, one-of-a-kind partnership with Coursera, uh, one of the you know leaders, uh, online learning skills, credentials. And what we did with them and some other partners in the higher ed space is for our learners, what we're doing is while you're in high school and you take courses, you're getting high school credit, mm -hmm. you're getting credit that can be transferred to two-year colleges. Well, so a lot talk about dual credit. You probably hear a lot about yeah. that. And then we said, let's take it one step further and let's do the tri-credit, which is an industry-ready certificate through Coursera that aligns for it. So when you're taking that high school course, you're also getting college credit for it, and you're also getting the opportunity to get industry credit. So how do we help our learners maximize their education at a point when it's subsidized? Because it gets pretty expensive, as you know, the further you get in your career to get educated. And so we think that's you know uh, one of the exciting things that we're launching our students and uh, getting great feedback, uh, really enjoying that. Because again, it gives them more opportunities. Yeah. And it will be flexible to the students as well in terms of um, they are getting industry ready. And I'm, I'm sure it is going to help them a lot. And uh, I'm also interested to talk about the collaborations that you guys have been into. So one of the things which you mentioned just now is about Coursera. And apart from yeah. that, e-dynamic learning, Acadium and Cridley, right? So these collaborations actually demonstrate a commitment to offering diverse learning opportunities and uh, credentials. So what is your thought behind that? And is it in a way to expand the disciplines in which you wanted to offer these um, education or what is the motto behind that? Yeah, well, I think, you know, if you think about the educational process, you have K-12, you have higher ed and you have workforce. Mm -hmm. And often companies uh, and entities play in one of those, yeah. maybe at most two. Uh, they might play, they, you know, content for K-12 and they really prepare the student for there and then they go out of it or they go to K-12 or higher ed and then they transition or they go into the workforce. Well, us, we have this really unique, I'll say opportunity and, and challenge that we deal with a learner in K-12, higher ed and the workforce. Yeah. And so, you know, we know the areas that we're really strong in, but we also know that we can't do it all and shouldn't try and do it all. And so how do we partner with the leaders in these other spaces that we can continue to engage that learner with the best tools, the best resources, the best education to give them the chance to live the best future that they want? And that's what led us to partnering up with Coursera, who had created and cultivated this great, great set of resources that was industry driven. It was the end game that our learners wanted to do. Um, could we have tried to create that at Pearson? We could have tried, but, you know, this is a thing where I think as we evolve and complex, if we want to move the system, it's about partnerships mm -hmm. and it's about how do we partner? How do we work with the uh, work with the best to be able to do that? So when you think about us, for example, right, we uh, in one of our divisions in the Connections Academy, we manage schools. So we manage high school students across the country. So when we do that, right, and then those students are taking that course and they're taking it and they're going to take that course that then they can work through one of our partners, Acadium, that has a lot of relationships with higher ed partners to make sure that that credit transfers. We work with Coursera and they're getting that certificate that has been built with the industry partners, right? So that we know it's aligned, it's what's in demand. And then, you know, at, at Pearson, we, we um, own an entity called Credly, right? Which is a way to verify that accomplishment, mm -hmm. track it and use it as a form of currency as we go yeah. out. So this is an example of how those players are all coming together and us working together with, again, the goal of getting our learner to where they want to be. Got it. And uh, this has been a great conversation so far and it's time for us to add some more spice into the episode. So it's time for me to kick off the second rapid fire round. So if you're ready, let's get started. Let's roll. <laughs> okay, let's get it rolling. And here comes the first bullet out of the second rapid fire round. If you could have one gigantic billboard anywhere with anything on it, what would it say? Never been asked this question. 
Um, I think in the society that we're in, I think it, it's, it would say, be kind. Mm -hmm. We are all on the same team at the end of the day. Be kind, we are all on the same team. Hmm. Wonderful. I, I think um, I, I, I see you as a strong team player and who promotes uh, teamwork from the conversation so far. So, which is essential for any organization success. Okay, that brings me to my next question. What is the most unusual thing you have ever eaten and did you like it? Did you say, and I liked it? Yeah, whether you like it or not. <laughs> oh, I would say cow tongue. Cow tongue? Okay, and you like it? Yeah, not really. <laughs> <laughs> okay. here, the texture, here. the texture got me. Yeah, <laughs> got it, got it. Here in India, we have this lamb tongue and there are certain restaurants which serve that and it is called as uh, Jeban. Jeban is the Hindi translation of uh, tongue. Okay, so that is sold in certain cities like Hyderabad where I live in and it is... Uh, <laughs> it is Do you like it? I, I, I like it. I like uh, lamb tongue, the je Jeban. Yeah. And, uh, here comes the next bullet. Can you describe yourself in just one word? Faithful. And here comes the next. If you could swap lives with anyone for a day, who would it be and why? Uh, what was it? If I could what? If you could Sorry. swap swap your life with someone for a day. Who would it be? Yeah. Who would it be and why? I would swap it with... This is a great question. <laughs> uh, you've got my, my wheels really turning on this one. I think I'd swap it with Peyton Manning. <laughs> I'd like to see what it felt like to be him and just, uh, you know, go and... and, and uh, and uh, have fun on shows after uh, all the all the accomplishments that that he has done. <laughs> Good luck on that, uh, Casey. And <laughs> okay, here comes a bomb. If you could invent a new holiday, what would it be, and how would we celebrate it? Ooh. New holiday? How could we celebrate it? I would create the holiday called Live, and it would be celebrated every year doing something. That you've always wanted to do that you never have done. So, you're living. Super. Love it. Love it. I, I wish we, we, we get one like that. And here comes the last bullet. What is one electronic gadget that you'd like to see or invent yourself? Ooh, electronic gadget. So, last week I had to continually to clean the dog hair out of my car. Mm -hmm. And so, if there is a way to extract that... Um, outside of any of the gadgets that I've tried to pur purchase on Amazon that have not worked, let me know. <laughs> Even I would be the second person to buy that. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, I, I enjoyed the rapid fire and let's flip back to the mainstream. So what will be your one piece of advice to those aspiring to make big in their careers? I think alignment in what you're doing in life for your career. So I think sometimes people chase, they get excited. You think of entrepreneurship about the money or the different part. But um, in going through my career, I found when you can align and do something mm -hmm. that you have passion to do it, you like to do it and want to do it, you have the skills to do it mm -hmm. in a location you want to be, in an environment you want to be, working with the people you want to work, and lastly, living the lifestyle you want to live, meaning making the money you do. When you align those and can get that alignment, it, it's a beautiful thing and it's not going to be easy. It's not going to take sweat, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it won't be great. I think this is one of the most powerful advices that I have ever heard on this show and I enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And um, uh, yeah. It's very, very humbling after watching all the other uh, participants you've had on, uh, on the show. I they just you know love this work. Yeah, indeed, uh, I, I'm very honest because uh, sometimes we get this kind of powerful nuggets and that's why for every conversation, I come with an open mind because I want to extract as much as I can from the guest. All right, so before I let you go, please share with me how is your experience being hosted on The Guiding Voice? It was fun. It was fun. It it uh, threw me some curveballs and it, I just, you know, I, I enjoy the opportunity to talk with passionate people like yourself and doing the work that you do as well. So um, thank you. Humbled. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for all the amazing insights and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule and sharing amazing insights with our audience. And I would love to call you again on the show. So thank you once again. And it was a pleasure hosting you, Casey. Absolutely. Sure.
right so friends that was our episode with kc welch and before we jump into the fun trivia section we have a quick request in case if you haven't already subscribed to the guiding voice podcast please subscribe from wherever you have tuned in whether it is youtube or apple spotify or wherever you have tuned in please subscribe because subscribing keeps you updated on new episodes and also if you have enjoyed this episode and found the conversation useful please share with at least three of your friends or colleagues who would also like the guiding voice so spread the knowledge and help others grow just like you thank you so much in advance now let's hop into the trivia segment now that we had amazing conversation about how pearson education is helping students earn tri credits and be better prepared for their careers in future i wanted to give you a brief introduction as well as least known facts related to credit system in education so these are the three interesting and lesser known facts about the credit systems that is prevalent in schools and colleges and the first one is about evolving credit system and the credit system has evolved over time adapting to the educational needs and in, initially it was introduced in the early 20th century and it aimed to provide flexibility however the system continues to evolve with innovations like competency based education emphasizing skills mastery over traditional time based credits etc in fact whatever pearson's team is offering the tri credit system that is also a unique and innovative approach likewise many organizations are trying to be different and unique and come up with something which is very innovative and at the same time offering flexibility to the students and next one is about life experience credits some institutions recognize life experiences for academic credits sounds interesting isn't it through prior learning assessments students can earn cr- credits for skills acquired outside traditional classrooms this recognizes the value of real world experiences in education so i am really curious to see what kind of advancements are going to happen in this space in the near future and the third one is about the credit banking as well as transfer limits so in this concept students can actually bank excess credits earned beyond degree requirements for future use however again institutions often impose limits on transfer credits ensuring a balance between courses taken at their institution and those transferred from elsewhere so these are the few facts from my side related to credits in the education system likewise if you have any other interesting facts related to credits in education systems please keep them coming through if you are watching this episode on youtube you can comment there or if you have found this episode on audio platforms you can reach out to me through social media platforms and share with me and that's it for today so thank you so much for tuning in and also for being part of our awesome tgv community folks we love to hear from you so do not hesitate to share your ideas feedback either through social media or you can also email us at the guiding voice for you at gmail.com i'm repeating the guiding voice for you at gmail.com and four as digit and u as letter and let's create content that resonates with you i'm your host navin samala a lifelong learner and my goal is to have impactful conversations that improve not only your life but also to your career and until next time take care stay inspired remember the future holds great things because the best is yet to come goodbye for now see you in the next episode with another amazing guest take care